struggling with debt, bills, loans, credit cards, need a way out? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt matters. Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm delighted to be joined by all the way in Sydney, Australia, Jason Maloney. Now, Jason, before I, I've already apologised to you, but I'm going to do it on camera. This interview was meant to take place yesterday. For some reason, I thought it was Sunday, but you said Saturday. So you can call me out, call me an idiot, whatever you want to do. But I do apologise for that, mate. Like, like I said, so sorry. No, nah, mate, it's all good. No stress at all. It's, um, it's a pleasure to, to chat to you, mate. I'm a big fan of the... Uh, the IFL interviews, uh, I'm a big fan. I watch them all the time. Oh, well, that, that's made my day. That's made my Sunday morning. Right, Jason, <laughs> so we just get straight into the nitty gritty and let's talk about it. Um, Anui, pound for pound, some guy's number one. Pound for pound, some guy's most dangerous man in boxing. Pound for pound, the hardest hitter in boxing. Where do you get the confidence from? I've seen a lot of your interviews, video interviews and articles, and you seem confident for this fight. Where does that come from? Yeah, I just believe in myself, mate. Um, I've obviously, like most boxers, you know, I've dedicated my whole life to this sport. I've made so many sacrifices and I just want to be the best that I can be. Uh, I, you know, I don't, I'm not interested in, I guess, going through a career of beating B-level opponents and building up a nice, nice looking record. Um, I want to test myself against the best of the best. Uh, I want to go as far as I can and... Um, the fight with Anui has always, always interested me. I've always wanted the fight. Um, to beat a legend like him and, you know, one of the pound-for-pound pound best, he's just going to do wonders for my career. And um, I want the opportunity. I want to I test myself. Uh, I'll go in there with full confidence. I believe if I fight at my best that I can beat him, and this is my big opportunity to prove it. So I'm very excited, mate. That's what I'm saying. Like, like I said, I've seen, I've seen a few interviews that you've done and you're sort of beaming with confidence. Now, a lot of people going in against Anui, like maybe uh, the common opponent that you've shared with him in Rodriguez, maybe he had that little sort of fear factor that he was knocking everyone out in the first round. Um, but you do share that common opponent in Rodriguez. Now, with some boxing fans, they might look at it and say that you lost against Rodriguez and Anui blew him out in two rounds. Now, what do you say to sort of these fans that might think that this is going to be an easy fight for Anui? If they compare well, the common opponent you've had. Yeah, and I guess that's an easy thing for people to do, compare common opponents. But as, as we know, it, this is boxing and, and that to me means absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, I had a, you know, a, a close split decision loss to Rodriguez. But um, I'm not the fighter I was now than, than what I was when I fought Rodriguez. I believe I've improved heaps since that fight. Um, and look, Rodriguez may have done all right against Anui. I thought he did okay in the first round. And then he maybe got a bit reckless and he got caught by a devastating puncher, which is Anui. And obviously, at that level, you can't afford, especially when you're fighting an opponent that, that can punch like, like Anui can, you can't afford to get hit early by a clean shot like that. Um, and this is boxing. That can happen to anyone. So that... Uh, that loss or, or, or comparing that, you know, Rod, how Red, Rodriguez did to Anui compared to how he did against me, it's, that doesn't play into my head at all. I know to me that means absolutely nothing. Um, and like, like I said, I'll, I've improved heaps since that Rodriguez fight. And um, I'm going in there against Anui, respecting him, but um, not placing him on this pedestal and thinking that he's this invincible man and being afraid of him. I'm not afraid of him. I see him as another man uh, with two arms and two legs, and I believe that um, I've got what it takes to beat him. Have you seen the... Obviously, he, the, his last three opponents before Donito with the Nair fight, he was knocked knock them out in first rounds, two rounds, first round. Now, Donito took him the distance and showed that uh, he can get hit. I knew he does get hit, and he does get hurt if he does get hit. He goes on the back foot a little bit. Now, you've got a good KO percentage, I think it's up there at 70, 18 kilos in 24 fights, I believe it is, or something along them lines. Do you have the power, like Nonito, to push Anui back and possibly hurt him in stages of this fight? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, I believe, I believe in my power and, and um, believe that I, that I can knock Anui out. Um, as you said, he, he can be hit. 
you know, he, he, because he is so aggressive and I guess because he backs his power so much, he does leave openings. And um, as Donnie showed, he can be hit and he can be hurt. And um, that's exactly what I plan on doing. You know, obviously it, it takes tremendous skill um, and the guts, you know, to, to pull the trigger. Um, but uh, I'm going in there to do exactly that. And um, I'll be uh, letting my hands go. Don't worry about that. And oh, I'm confident that if I, if I hit him clean, I can take him out. Again, with the fans watching this fight, man, like you, you said that, like, I'm, I'm getting this vibe from you that you, you're, like I said to you, but full of confidence, but you seem happy about this fight. You seem over the moon and like, you've got a smile on your face when you talk about Anui. Is this the sort of fight that gets you uh, motivated? And like, where does that come from as well? The motivation to fight something like Anui as well? Is it just with the world titles or is it the legendary status that Anui's put himself on? Like, where does that sort of motivation come from as well? Yeah, like you said, all of it, mate. Like, this fight excites me so much and, um, you know, it's a fight that, you know, it maybe even for, if it wasn't for, you know, the coronavirus, this fight wouldn't have happened. So I just feel very, uh, very excited very, and very honoured to have the opportunity, I guess, you know, or it's not as if it was just given to me. I believe I've earned the opportunity, but, but you know, he was locked into fire Casemiro and he was talking about trying to unify the bantamweight division. And then he was talking about moving on to super band and weight. And um, as I said, it's always been a fight that I've wanted. Uh, you know, I watch Anui and I, I see him as a great, great fighter, but I've always just wanted the opportunity to fight him. Um, and yeah, it was just, you know, it was looking like maybe it wasn't going to happen. And then here it is, mate. Um, I've been given the opportunity to, um, you know, to beat, one of the pound for pound best, and, and not only win two world titles and the ring ma and the ring magazine title, but it's just going to change my life. This victory, you know, it, it'll just turn me into a star overnight, um, and just you know completely catapult my career uh, to where I wanted to be. You know, I, I wanted to achieve something special in this sport, um, just winning a couple of fights and you know doing well uh, in Australia isn't enough for me. I, yeah. I want it all. And um, this is my opportunity to do it. You mentioned the two world titles there and you mentioned the Ring Magazine belt. If or when you beat Anui on Halloween, dare we put you in the pound for pound list with Lomachenko, Crawford and all that? Can we put your name up there if you beat Anui? I hope so. <laughs> oh, I'm not the one that writes the list, but I'll be very happy. You know, like... These are dreams of mine, mate, and that and that that is why I am so um, excited and you know happy about the fight because this is where I want to be. You know, I want to be on the pound for pound list. I want to be you know a multiple time world champion. I want to hold all the belts, and and this is it. Uh, I'm all in, taking a big big risk. Obviously, um, a lot of people out there obviously think I'm crazy for wanting the fight. Uh, and maybe I am. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe you've got to be a bit crazy to to have these massive, massive goals and massive dreams and, and to back yourself as much as I do. But um, hopefully it's all going to pay off for me. We've seen we've seen in boxing the underdog, because you will be the underdog going into this fight, it's probably safe to say. Um, but we've seen underdogs pull off the victory. You know what I mean? We've seen it just recently now with Andrew Ruiz and Anthony Joshua. Maybe you can probably say Pavetkin against White in the heavyweight division as well, that sometimes the underdog can cause an upset. Can, can we get that? Can you, are you that underdog that can cause an upset this time round? I mean, you're, you are fighting the monster on Halloween, so it sort of sells itself the fight. Do you know what I mean? But we've seen it before, haven't we? The underdog sometimes wins. That's why this is such an amazing sport. You know, the sport of boxing, that's, you never know what's going to happen. And um, I'm going in there. I know it would be a big, big shock for people who follow us to cause the upset, but um, I'm going in there believing I can do it. And um, I'm training the house down and I'm going into this fight, giving myself absolutely every opportunity to get the win. And uh, I'll be going in there and giving this absolutely everything I've got. And um, I believe if I fight my best, that my best is good enough. When we think boxing as well, Jason, like you always think about the UK, Mexico, the US and stuff like that. Australia's quite a, a sleeping sort of, well, it's not. Nobody really talks about Australia in terms of boxing and stuff like that. But you have had some great fighters in Costa Zoo and and whatnot. But for you winning this fight, could you bring the big fights to Australia, 
obviously when ob hopefully when we go back to normal, can we see the big fights with you in Australia instead of you coming to Vegas and U UK and stuff like that? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. That'd be an absolute dream because, um, as you said, boxing's not that big a sport in Australia, um, and that's something that I want to change. Um, obviously, the only way to do that is to be successful and to bring the big fights here. Um, and to catch, you know, capture the hearts of, of everyone in Australia and get them all right behind me. Um, and a win like this, well, that's going to do exactly that. Um, you know, I think me beating Anui would have to go down as one of, if not the best wins by an Australian boxer ever. So uh, winning this fight um, and then possibly bringing, you know, world title fights and, and having defences in Australia and selling out, you know, we've got some unbelievable stadiums that, I would love to pack out uh, and, and put on some big, big fights here. So definitely, um, I'd love, love to, um, you know, be the face of Australian boxing and really be the man who, um, you know, lights the fire for boxing in Australia. When do you fly out to Vegas? I know you're in Sydney right now. You just said that you've done 10 rounds of sparring yesterday, day off tomorrow. You're back to the grind tomorrow, uh, today. You're back to the grind tomorrow, sorry. When do you fly out to Vegas to sort of acclimatise and stuff like that? Yeah, we've just been um, discussing flights at the moment. We're going to go over at least a month, maybe five weeks before the fight. So, yeah, we'll be heading out there pretty shortly. Um, my manager's booking in some good sparring for us over there in Vegas. And, um, yeah, we'll be going over there nice and early, make sure that, that uh, we give ourselves plenty of time to adjust to the time difference and the heat and everything over there, um, get in some really good sparring. And, yeah, just, mate, we're, we're all in. Um, We'll be, you know, doing absolutely everything right to give ourselves the best chance to win this fight. So, looking forward to it. Well, so, man, I'm definitely looking forward after speaking to you. Like, I'm, you're beaming with confidence. Finally, Jason, before I let you go, and uh, it's probably your bedtime in Sydney right now, but before <laughs> I let you go, uh, one final message for the fans that will be watching this fight, you against the Nui. You got any message for them? And why they yeah, should tune well, in? Well, of course, tune in. Um, Bob Aram's already called it as, as the potential fight of the year. Uh, I'm with him. I think it's going to be uh, you know amazing fight when you got two guys that just let it all go and and um and both want to win so bad. So I'm really looking forward to the fight. Um, thank you to everyone for their support. Um, I really really appreciate it and um hope to do you all proud on the 31st of October. And um yeah, keep following the journey. Definitely, like I say, I'm looking forward to the fight. Definitely, I'm going to agree with Bob Arnold. This could possibly the fight of the year. Um, Jason, like I said, thank you so much for doing this for IFL TV. Thanks for giving up your Sunday night when it should have been Saturday night. I do apologise again, but thank you so much for giving up your Sunday to have a chat with me. And uh, if I, I'll probably try and get a chat with you a couple of weeks before the fight to see how your mood is then, if that's okay. Again, thank you so much, my man. That'd be great, mate. Always happy to talk to you, mate, and I um, appreciate the time. Anytime, my man. Stay safe and speak to you soon. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Struggling with that? Bills, loans, credit cards. Need a way out? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt matters.